Hi, and welcome back to our channel Summaries of a Bookworm. Your number one place for all who need or like to listen to book summaries. Let's start with the book summary of today. During the time of King Henry VIII, a young weaver named Jack Winchcombe lives in the English town of Newbury. As a young man, he is a bit of a spendthrift. He spends as much as he makes and has a reputation for being a happy young man. Everyone in Berkshire calls him, Jack of Newbury. Jack changes, though, after his master dies. His mistress falls in love with the young man and gives him all of her husband's business to run. Jack starts to be careful with both his mistress's and his own business, and he soon loses his reputation for being a spendthrift. He gets a reputation as an honest, hardworking, and smart businessman in its place. His mistress thinks so highly of Jack that she asks him to help her with her love life. His advice doesn't help her much, though, because she has already decided to marry Jack, even though they are years apart. She uses a trick to get him to agree to let her marry someone she doesn't know. When they get to the church, Jack finds out that he is the groom. He then marries her and takes over her house and business. At first, the marriage doesn't go too well. Even though the woman loves Jack, she doesn't like being told what to do by the man who used to be her servant. But in the end, they come to an agreement and live happily for a few years. After that, the good woman dies, leaving Jack in charge of the business and wealthy with all the goods in the world. Jack gets married again to a young woman not long after his first wife dies. Even though he could choose from any rich woman in the county, he picked a bad wife. After the expensive wedding, it isn't long before King James of Scotland invades England while King Henry is in France. The justices of the county ask Jack to send six armed men to join the army that Queen Catherine is putting together. Jack decides to raise a company of 150 men and horses, which he arms and dresses in different uniforms at his own cost. Jack leads his men on horseback. Queen Catherine is very happy and thanks Jack in person for all he has done, even though his men are not needed for the English to win at Flodden Field. As a reward for his help, the Queen gives Jack a gold chain. King Henry takes a trip through Berkshire in the tenth year of his rule. In a funny way, Jack tells the king that he is the prince of the ants and that he is at war with the butterflies. This is a plot against Cardinal Wolsey. The king is very happy and takes his train to Newbury, where Jack throws a wonderful banquet for him and everyone else. After the meal, the king goes to see Jack's weaving rooms and warehouses. When Jack leaves, the king wants to make him a knight, but the weaver says he'd rather be an ordinary person and die as he lived, as a clothier. Jack of Newbury has a series of 15 paintings in his house. Each one is a portrait of a famous person whose father was a tradesman of some kind. For example, one of the paintings is of Marcus Aurelius, whose father was a clothier. Jack keeps the pictures and shows them to his friends and co-workers to encourage them to strive for fame and respect, no matter how lowly their jobs are. During King Henry's rule, there were a lot of wars in Europe, which hurt trade in general. Clothiers and weavers have it the worst, so they get together and send leaders to London to ask the government for help. Jack is one of the people they send to help. The king remembers Jack and tells him in a private meeting that steps will be taken to help the clothiers out of their tough situation. The Lord Chancellor, Cardinal Wolsey, is another man who did not forget about Jack. In order to get around what the king said, he throws Jack and the other envoys in jail for a few days. Finally, the Duke of Somerset steps in and shows the cardinal that the clothiers are not trying to hurt him. After a while, an Italian trader named Benedict comes to Jack's house to do business. While he's there, he falls in love with Joan, a pretty young worker for Jack. She doesn't pay any attention to Benedict, though, and asks a relative to tell him not to bother her. When the kinsman does what the Italian asks, he upsets him, so the Italian vows to make the kinsman a cuckold for his trouble. With gifts and nice words, the Italian finally gets the weaver's wife to like him, but she feels bad right away. She tells her husband, and he gets his own back on the Italian by acting like he will make sure the Italian can sleep with Joan. The Italian goes along with the plan and ends up in bed with a pig. All the Englishmen then laugh so hard at him that he feels ashamed and leaves Newbury. The second wife of Jack is a nice young woman, but she sometimes makes the mistake of listening to her gossipy friends too much. At one point, a friend tells her that she is wasting money on the workers because she feeds them so well. She gives the workers less and lower quality food, but Jack, who remembers when he was an apprentice and had to eat whatever was put in front of him, gets very angry and makes her change her ways again. When he says that his wife's friend will never come back to his house again, his workers are happy. Jack goes to London at a different time and finds a draper who owes him 500 pounds working as a porter. When Jack finds out that the man is broken through no fault of his own, he puts him back in business to show how much he trusts him. 
Friends tell him he's throwing good money after bad, but Jack's decision turns out to be right. The man pays back every penny and goes on to become a London alderman. Jack is always happy with his staff. Sir George Wrigley, a knight, once wooed a pretty and smart young woman who worked for Jack. Jack promises to make things right for her. He sends the woman to London, but she is dressed as a rich widow. Sir George falls in love with her without knowing who she is, and they get married. At first, the knight is angry, but he soon realizes that the situation is fair and is very happy with the hundred pounds that Jack gives the woman as a dower. Still knowing their places in life, Jack and his wife give precedence to Sir George and his new lady, even in their own house. Thank you for listening to our book summary. I hope we sparked your interest in the book. Please let us know in the comments below and give this video a thumbs up. Do you want to listen to more book summaries? Subscribe to us and you will get a notification every time we publish a new summary. Bye bye and see you next time.